Yes, a new bike build day. It is very exciting moments and the main idea of this episode from me for you guys is first off to just let you know you can build a bike without having a prior experiences with different parts. You can do that. Second is to let you know the main problem you're gonna come across which is different standards for everything for the steering uh, tube, for the headset, for the bottom bracket, for the cassette. There, there are so many different standards, I don't even know all of them. But third, I'm just gonna give you the knowledge about the questions you need to ask when you are buying even the parts online uh, so that you, you, you can make sure the part will fit to your bike. All right, so you can build a bike if you know the, the questions you need to ask, what dimensions you need to know, you're gonna do it. And it's gonna be lovely because this process is so exciting. You are collecting all the parts, looking at those and weighing the parts and thinking about different graphics on different, different uh, components of your bike. I really recommend all of you guys to build at least one bike in your life. This is going to be Kona Explosive uh, bike for fun with the rigid fork and some nice parts. We'll see how it looks like. So let's just uh, jump to the bike stand and we're gonna go over all the parts and all the questions. I think, I think I'm gonna give you all the questions you need uh, to ask when you're buying the parts so that you will actually make it happen. And then in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how I'm putting all the parts together. Here we are. This is the sole of the bike the frame the material you're gonna use uh, the size you're gonna you're gonna choose uh, of the frame the geometry of different models uh, of, of the frames it will make your bike handle in different ways it will make the bike heavier lighter stiffer less stiff more compliant and so on and so on so the size is very important but that's the bike fitting and bike sizing matter so just jump to my playlist uh, with that topic but here we need to mount all the parts so what parts will be assembled on the bike most of the parts. We need the seat post uh, which will uh, slide into the seat tube. Uh, we need the fork, we need the crank set, we need the derailleur. Uh, we're gonna also attach the housings to the frame. So let's start with the first and not that complicated thing which is the seat post. Here we go. This is the seat tube. So this is the part of our frame and this is the seat post. This tube goes inside the frame, so inside the seat tube. Now, what questions we need to ask ourselves? First off, what is the diameter of the seat post and seat tube? Because the seat post must go inside the seat tube and must fit correctly there. And here is how we measure the diameter of our seat tube and seat post. We use the calipers. The electronical one would be the best. Uh, those would be more uh, precise. Uh, but I'm measuring this diameter right here. Okay, and I see that it's 31, 31 point something. That means I'm gonna be using the 31.6 seat post. Now, make sure this is not just about 31 or below 31 because then you also have 30.9 seat post, which could fit, but this one here is 31.6. And here is how we don't measure this diameter. We don't wanna have the external diameter because the seat post goes inside this tube. This is the seat post I bought, and as you can see, its diameter is 31.6 millimeters, so it fits nicely and tightly to the frame. You can also see the minimum insertion line, this one here. That means that at least this uh, length of the, of the seat post should be hidden inside of the frame. So we should not go over this, it should be inside. That's why uh, you should not have too short seat post so that your saddle will be at the right position for you. There is one more part we need to have here on this tube so that it will, uh, it will fix our seat post and that's the seat post clamp. It goes like this on different bikes like that but this is the clamp which we are going to use in order to fix the seat post uh, into our 
C-tube. And here we need to know the external diameter of, the, of this uh, tube because seat post clamp will go externally on this bike particularly like that. A little bit deeper, but like that. Great, now you know how to match the seat post with the frame. But remember about some other things like the length of the seat post I've already mentioned and also the offset of the seat post. Can you see the difference between these two? I think you see, you can, um, here the saddle will be located centrally over the tube of the seat post and here it has some offset so it will be moved backwards. This is also the bike sizing matter but if you have no clue whatsoever about what offset to choose, maybe just the zero offset or something just like a little bit uh, to the back, but nothing extreme. It's time for the saddle. So the saddle, of course, must fit your butt. Uh, it can have different shaping and uh, width. And as I said, it can be waved, it can be flat, and so it can have cut out or not. This is also bike fitting matter. But um, in terms of the compatibility, your saddle rails must match the system, mounting system of your seat post. These red little sticks here, uh, this is removable and in this place will come these two rails. So it will come just like this. I'm gonna show you that on the next episode when I'm, when I'm assembling the bike. Uh, and this is the most, not most uh, popular standard, most of the seat posts will have it, uh, but there will be also some different uh, systems which I'm showing you uh, here on the screen. Uh, but make sure that your seat post system, assembly system and the saddle rails are matching. Great, we already know that we need to measure the internal diameter of the seat tube. Now we are moving on to the head tube because that's where our fork will be assembled. Uh, it can be the rigid fork as this one, so no suspension. It can be also the suspension fork. But uh, in terms of the questions you need to ask yourself about the head tube is its length. So for example, this head tube has a length of 135 millimeters and also the internal diameter of the head tube. I'm gonna measure that. This is the head tube, the calipers, and now we can measure it. But as you can see, the top and the bottom of this head tube has different diameter. And this is called tapered head tube because it's tapering towards the top. Most of the modern bikes will have now the tapered head tubes. These are more stiff and, and these maneuver better, better, are better, better to handle. Uh, on the older bikes, the top diameter and the bottom one will be the same. More info just in a second, but let's measure this one. And the internal diameter here at the top is 44 millimeters. And now the bottom one is significantly larger and it's 50, it looks like 55.5 here. So you know you're gonna be using different bearing here at the top and here at the bottom. Additional tip, when you are measuring the diameter here, make sure you measure it here at the top because the dimension down there can be different. As you can see here is the special, how, how is it called, the place for the bearings. So measure just this one here. It can be lower diameter right there. Great, are you catching all this? I'm sure you do and you will have no problems finding the right bearings now. So now the headset. We have two bearings, upper bearing and the bottom bearing. Okay, these are the bearings as you can see. And there can be like whole different world of bearings and caps and different systems. But once you know the dimensions of your head tube, you can just send those to the online store that's exactly what I did and they will tell you, okay, we've got the, the uh, model of the bearings right for you. Uh, at this particular frame, I'm not mounting the bearings right into the head tube, but first I'm using the cups and the cups were sent with the bearings. So the bearing fits nicely inside the cup. The cup goes right there. It will be pushed here inside. 
and also the bottom one this is the cup this is the bearing this is how it works and then I'm gonna just push it through right there and now I'm ready to mount my fork which will be all featured on the next episode but now you know what you need to ask uh, the seller, the questions you need to add, ask the seller in order to write to find the right bearings. Now this is getting really exciting because once you get the fork just like that inside the frame, it starts to have some kind of a look, and I am loving this phase of the building process. But the questions we need to ask about the fork are: since we've measured the dimension, the, the diameter of the uh, head tube at the bottom and at the top. We also need to know what's the diameter of the steering tube and this one is also tapered you can see it's thinner up here and it's going a little bit wider or um, larger diameter down there it means this is a tapered fork that's good because we have tapered head tube that's great so take the uh, calipers and measure this diameter and this diameter your uh, steering tube might be one inch, it might be 118 inch, it might be 118 by 1 1.5 different diameters. So just measure it and then you know what bearings you need and the bearings that need to fit the head tube, okay? So this is the, the whole setup. When you're buying a new fork, the steering tube will normally be way longer than your head tube, which is good be because you're gonna be cutting your steering tube anyway. Uh, but if you buy a used one, somebody was already cutting it for their head tube size and the stem, which will be here. So make sure it's not too short. The steering tube cannot be too short. It has to be your head tube length plus your spacers plus the stem. So you need to be aware of that. The next question, don't worry, there will be quite a few questions here. All are just simple. You need to know those. That, that's it, that's all. Uh, what will be the geometry of your bike with this fork? For example, when I was ordering this um, fork from Carbon Cycles, they asked me, Dan, what fork was originally uh, put into your frame? So I, I had to find this Kona explosive uh, on the archives and find what suspension fork was there uh, so that they from Carbon Cycles would uh, offer me the right length of the fork, the ge geometry of the fork, because it can change. So make sure that your fork will, will fit. Most of the fork just will, uh, but you just have to be aware that there is something like a trail of the fork, the offset of the, of the dropouts. So the geometry of the bike will change. It can be higher, it can be lower that also uh, matters, especially if you are replacing the suspension fork with the rigid fork, make sure that the geometry will be kind of the same. There are also some questions you need to ask regarding the fork on the wheel side, number one. What is the wheel size you're gonna use because the fork must match it. For example, this is the 27.5 inch wheel and the fork is high enough for it. Uh, this could be 29 or 24 inch 700c for the road bikes or trekking bikes or some gravel bikes so the size of the wheel is important you also want to check out the tire clearance for example this tire has uh, the width of 2.25 inches uh, and as you can see i have lots of clearance here and also above the tire especially on the road bikes uh, you need to make sure that your fork will fit, let's say, 25 millimeter tires if you want to, because some forks will only have the distance, the, uh, the, the space for the 23 millimeter tires. So that's, that's uh, very important. On the mountain bikes, maybe you want to use 2.4 tire. Uh, are you going to ride a lot in the mud? Then you want to have some additional uh, mud clearance. So make sure your fork will have it. This is a quick release because you can quickly release the fork from the hub. So you can remove the wheel easily. If you can see such a dropout, that means these are made for the quick release. If they were like closed eyelets, that would mean that you are going to use the through axle. And what you need to know is what system are you gonna use 
on the wheels or on the fork. So, what's the distance between the dropouts here and what type of axle you're gonna have on the hub? And that means uh, what's, how, how thick uh, the axle is and also how wide the axle is. So, these two dimensions, if you know those, if you know what kind of uh, of uh, release you're gonna have either through axle or quick release then you know what fork to buy and finally the brakes are you gonna use the disc brakes or some kind of uh, vib brakes or, or caliper brakes so you need to make sure that your fork will either have the mounts for the vib brakes if you use those or cantilever brakes if you have some vintage project or if it has the mount for your disc brakes. There are also some standards here about this in the second. Great, we've got a lot of work done already. The seat post, the seat post clamp, the fork and the headset are already ordered because you know everything about it. It's time for the bottom bracket shell because we need the crank set on the bike. And just like with the fork, in order to assemble the crank set into our frame, first we need to have there the bearings. So the bearings must fit the bottom bracket shell. First question, what is the length or the width of your bottom bracket shell? Very often it will be 68 or 73 millimeters. In this case it's 73 millimeters shell. The second question, does your bottom bracket shell has a threads? inside or not. If it does have the threads, you're going to be threading the uh, bottom bracket bearings in. If it doesn't have the threads, it's going to be some kind of a press fit. Press fit, BB30 and all the standards which, which don't use any threads. Many different frames will be using so-called BSA system. Uh, the crank set will have the 24 millimeters spindle and then the thread here I mean the inside diameter the inner diameter of the bottom bracket shell will have just about 33 millimeters if it was let's say BB30 system then the axle would be not 24 but 30 millimeters so much larger and the bottom bracket shell will also be oversized the SRAM name for the BSA standard is GXP uh, and FSA, for example, will call it Mega XO. If you don't know what system you have on your bottom bracket shell, check out the thread. So if you have the threads inside the shell, make sure what kind of thread it is. Here on the GXP or BSA system, I'm threading the drive side bearing counterclockwise and on the non-drive side, I'm gonna be doing that clockwise. So it's opposite on both sides. So check out what type of threads you've got. The bottom bracket bearings will often be sold together with the crank set. If not, now you need to make sure that this hole here corresponds to the diameter of your spindle. So this is the 24 millimeter spindle and here, I have exactly 24 millimeters so that it fits tightly. Okay, we've got the bottom bracket bearings. We know what kind of crank set we need. Just one more thing about the crank set is the length of its arm. Uh, this is also the bike sizing, bike fitting issue, but let's just say in general for the mountain bikes on the large frames the 175 millimeters length is the standard that's the that's the number right here uh, and on the road bikes it will be 172.5 so 2.5 millimeters shorter on the on the road bike than on the mountain bike we know almost everything we need about our frame uh, except for the rear wheel, but here we're gonna ask ourselves just the same questions as with the fork. So we need to know what size of the wheel this frame will accept, what tire clearance it will have, and what type of the axle for the rear hub it will accept. 
So what type of the quick release of the through axle uh, we're gonna use. This is the 27.5 inch wheel. As you can see on this bike, we have additional uh, adjustment for the rear wheels for the distance here. It, this is very rare. This is very rare on the bikes. It will be also on some triathlon or time trial bikes uh, available, but on most bikes it will be just fixed. So you need to know what size of the wheel is for your frame. You can see here the eyelets and the thread on that side. That means we are using a threaded through axle here. So something that we're going to thread into the, uh, the frame. So it's not a quick release. This is the through axle. And make sure also you know what type of, of thread it has, whether it's a maxle or not how long the the axle is and how thick it is this one is 12 by 142 millimeters it's time for the brakes as you can see no pivots here so no v brakes compatibility but we have the disc brakes compatibility now the disc brake mounts this is our disc brake as you can see this is the part we are assembling on the onto the handlebars so this is the lever don't push it when it's without the the wheels even though there is some protection here and this is the caliper as you can see the frame and the fork have different system this is the international standard this is the post mount and the caliper i have here will fit nicely right here to the post mount but doesn't fit here to the uh, uh, international standard so you need to know what kind of a of a brake you have and maybe what kind of adapters you're going to use for your brakes and for the diameter of the disc brake rotor whether it's 160 millimeters 180 or maybe more than 200 millimeters and so on this international standard mount I'm gonna use the adapter from IS to post mount. It's time for the wheels. If you even want to build your own custom wheels, you will be advised what parts you need uh, just by the people which will be doing it for you. But just shortly, the tire inside can be the inner tube or the tubeless system with the sealant. Then this is the rim here. The red ones are the nipples, then the spokes and the hub. Uh, you need to match the number of the holes in the hub and in the rim so that it will be just for the certain amount of the spokes you're gonna use and also the rim it's good to know what is the internal width of the rim because different tires will have different shape according to the uh, width of the rim so we will be just advised also by the, by the online, online store and just ask I want to have 2.25 tires is the rim of the 20 something three millimeters with okay for that so that's easy let's go for the rotors and here just two questions so what's the assembly system and what's the diameter of your disc brake router this is the center lock this is how it operates you've got one centrally located nut this is the center lock and if there was a place assembly for six bolts that would be called six bolt system you can also use the adapter from center lock to six bolt for example so that you can use different uh, rotors and the second thing is the diameter of the rotor the larger the rotor the more speed more aggressive ride you can do the standard for mountain bikes is 160 in the rear and 180 millimeters in the front you can see the info just on each of the rotors you would be buying so that's just the general info you should be happy normally with 160 rear 180 front now let's turn the wheel around now the free hub or the free wheel make sure you need the free hub or the free wheel these are these are two different systems on the free hub and uh, the free hub must be compatible with the number of the gears you're gonna be using so that's one thing uh, the Shimano and SRAM uh, free hubs will take will take this Shimano and SRAM cassettes, but Campagnolo have different free hubs. So that's another thing. But also, 
the SRAM cassettes which are in the Eagle technology and have just 10 teeth super small uh, sprocket here will use another free hub and it's called XD because of how small this sprocket is. So XD for the Eagle technology with the 10 teeth uh, sprocket, the smallest one, so the highest gear. Then Campagnolo need their own free hubs and also the Shimano and SRAM, you need to make sure what number of the gears you are using. It's finally the time for our cockpit. So this is the fork. Uh, you know all the features of the fork you should know. But then on the fork, on the steering tube, we're gonna be mounting the stem. And the stem, that's the part which will connect the fork to the handlebars. So what we need to know is the diameter of the steering tube. It would be, in most of the cases, either one inch on one, or one one eight inch. So this is one one eight and the stem has to fit in here. So that's one thing. And the other thing is the diameter of your handlebars right here, not just there, right here uh, at the center, because then the stem has to match the diameter of the handlebars. For example, let's look at this. Now we can see this. 31.8 millimeters of the stem here from the, for the handlebars and 31.8 on the handlebars. And as I said, this is not the diameter right there. It just, this is just the number for the diameter right here because the stem will go here. One additional note on the bike sizing and bike fitting, the stem and the, the handlebars are important here. The handlebars can have different shapes, both for the mountain bikes and road bikes. Uh, it can be also of different uh, width, so that's something you need to consider. The stem can be of different length and different um, uh, angle, so it can be like 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees or so. This one, for example, is of 60 millimeter length, so a short one. So this is something you need to have in mind when buying the handlebars and the stem. On the handlebars, we're gonna mount the grips. So this is just a matter of the comfort, your preferences, color and so on. Uh, usually no problems with the compatibility, but you can always ask the seller. I have this type of the handlebars, will these grips uh, fit? So that's one thing. And then we are also mounting all the levers. So this is the braking lever, this is the shifting lever. You might also have the dropper post lever and the lockout for your suspension. Uh, there are different systems that sometimes uh, will, will, uh, will make it possible to mount, for example, the shifter directly to the, uh, to the braking lever, so no additional mount for the shifter needed. As you can see here, I do have the mount, because this SRAM shifter doesn't have any matching system with the uh, Magura MT4. I have um, uh, brakes, so I need this mount here. Uh, and that's basically it for the for the road bikes. You're gonna have the bar tech instead of such a grips, and you are almost good to go. Let's look at the drivetrain. All right, what has to be matched here? First thing, the number of the sprocket on the cassette. So number of the speed of the cogs here. Let's say we have the 11 speed. This is the 12. But let's say we have 11 speed. You need to have 11 speed compatible chain. 11 speed on the shifter, 11 speed compatible derailleur, and 11 speed compatible chain rings on the crankset. Now, sometimes uh, you may just use the older derailleur for more gears on the cassette, so you can upgrade. You can also use the older crankset for the newer cassette with the, with the more gears. Uh, but just in general, the manufacturers will always tell you this is the 11 speed compatible crankset or 10 speed compatible or 12 speed compatible right now. So that's important. And then the shifter must work with the derailleur. Some SRAM shifters will not work with Shimano derailleurs, but also sometimes within the brand, like let's say newer shifter from Shimano will not work with the older 
uh, derailleur from Shimano because of the changed pooling ratio, so the cable pooling ratio. You just need to ask, I want to have this derailleur for this type, this number of speed, will these uh, shifters work? It's both for the, for the road shifters, road drivetrain and the mountain bike. Of course, you may also add the front derailleur if you have more gears here on the crankset and then you're going to also use the uh, front shifter. Let's add one little thing, that's the housings. Uh, so we need the cables for the, for the uh, derailleurs and the housings. If you have mechanical brakes, you're going to also use the cables for the brakes and the housings for those. The housing for the um, for the derailleur and for the brakes uh, will be different, the cables will also be different and also you need to match the cable with the shifter. For example, on the road bikes uh, the cable for Campagnolo shifters will be different than Shimano shifters. So you just need to know what shifter you have and what, what cables uh, you use and then here we also have some cable, cable stops and those little caps for the, for the end of the cables and that's it here. Okay, this is really the last thing we have to know. The way we're gonna be mounting the front and rear derailleur on the bike. Uh, there are different systems, uh, but if you just know what question to ask, it will be no problem. This is for example the direct mount. You can also have the front derailleur uh, mounted uh, with the clamp and just onto the uh, seat tube, then you need to know the diameter uh, of the seat tube. Uh, but usually also with the derailleurs, which come with the clamp, uh, you get also the shims, so you can match most of the frames. But just know that there is, there is such a, such a uh, compatibility uh, issue and you need to know what type of mount you have on your frame and then buy the derailleur. And then in the rear you need to know what type of the mount you have here. This is just the standard derailleur hanger which, which is used for 90% of the bicycle. So this is not a big issue, uh, but just make sure you know what type of, of the mount you have here and what type of the rear derailleur uh, will fit. And that's basically it. You know what? We did it. We just made it through. It's time to build this little beast and that's gonna be featured in the next episode. See you there, bye bye.